Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning on this Harvest Festival. And the sun is shining, yay! <laughs> it's wonderful. Good morning to everyone on Zoom and all you people who are here with us today. I can remember this day when I was a child going to church and all the harvest, just like this. My father was a great gardener. We lived in Auckland and we had fruit trees and all this produce we used to take to church. It's a wonderful occasion to remember the goodness that God gives us and keeps giving us. He provides all our needs and we can trust that. We can depend on that. We are so fortunate and we're so fortunate to live in this country where we can grow food and enjoy our beautiful gardens. So it's just something to remember that God supplies all our physical needs as well, clean water, fish, eggs, all those things that we need. So I'd like us just to take a few quiet moments and think about all the different foods that God supplies for us and how lucky we are. Now please stand. I was looking to see if anyone had one of their decorated sun hats on, but I don't see any. I thought I'd wear green because it's a verdant colour, right? <laughs> to do with growing. <laughs> so grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now our first hymn, Blessed Be Your Name, which is a wonderful sentiment. Let's all sing. Every blessing you 
past is ransomed me, his grace runs me. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. In my mother's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child. We are all children of God, and he loves us. So the sentence for today, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our confession. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us, some escape us, some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you, forgive others, and forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. Well, we've got a slide for the kids' church. But how many kids do we have? <laughs> not many today. These COVID times seem to have resulted in us not having too many children. But if any adults would like to come into the godly play area then you're welcome to, to um, come and see what goes on there. Um, now's the time. 
Um, so hopefully, there may be some kids online, there probably are actually, um, but, um, but nevertheless, um, these are unusual times, so we'll cope. So now the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Peace of Christ dwell in us richly. And let us all pray the collect together. Here it is. Creator God, we thank you for pouring your abundance on us, giving us the fruits of the earth in these seasons and placing your creativity within us. Help us to use your gifts wisely for our own, to your glory, for our own well-being and for the relief of those in need. In Christ we pray. Amen. Now Helen will give us our first reading. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And now please stand and let's welcome in the gospel with lifting up our voices. Take my gifts and let me love you.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Praise and glory to God. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich toward God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, God, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Please take a seat. Welcome. And look at how I'm dressed today. No tangible. In front of the altar. That's my shirt. Okay. Some can, some can't here. But um, I wanted to wear this, which is my green stole, which goes very well with Harvest Festival because it's got wheat on it, or barley, or one or the other. So there we go. I didn't wear a chasuble this morning for that reason. Oops, and now I'm going to go to this microphone. So I'll just turn this off. And there we go. Hopefully everyone can still hear me. Uh, so blessed are you, God of all creation, it's through your goodness that we have these gifts to share. We say that, or a form like it, at every service that we have. And today at our services, at our 8 o'clock service, our 10 o'clock service, at our service at 9 o'clock at All Saints, we're celebrating Harvest Festival. Harvest is an Anglo-Saxon word it comes, it's an uh, Anglo-Saxon name is Harfest, autumn. And it became, came to refer to the season for reaping and gathering grain or other grown products. For me, and I'm sure many of us, and Robin's already mentioned it in her life, it brings back memories of our youth where this celebration was an annual event on the church calendar. The first 11 years of my life before I came to St. James's in 1971, that's a long time ago, I was brought up in the country outside Mosgiel in Otago. And I went to a small country school that went through to year eight or form two, and it had a total of 90 students. You can only just see the small country school on the left hand side. It was a very old building built in the 1800s that, um, that we had our school lessons in. In that uh, photo on the left-hand side, the house that we lived in is directly on the right-hand side there. It's actually a, a house that my father built when they uh, were first married. Those days were spent outside climbing trees and running across the fields before my friend's bull 
got you. It's a bit sleepy, so we called it bulldozer. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we ate raw turnips, and I still like them raw, out of the fields that were destined for the pigs. So the farmer would grow them for the pigs, but we ate them as kids. We ran from swarms of bees, and we played at the local tip and steam train graveyard. Jude will like that. You'll pass that on to Russell. The Otago steam train graveyard was just near our house. You learned to build a safe tree house that didn't result in you plunging to the ground at 9.8 metres per second per second. And life was simple, and thinking about it now, quite dangerous. One of the things that we always celebrated at St Luke's Anglican Church in Mosgill was Harvest Festival. And I know it was celebrated here as well. We just haven't done it for a while. They had a real reason to celebrate, just like in Jesus' time, and it's because, being a farming district, some depended directly on the strength of the harvest to survive. Some of us as children uh, raided our grandparents' veggie gardens and plum trees after school when we were hungry, rather than pleading to go to McDonald's. I hope that for the children or the youth here today that this festival creates a lasting memory grounded in where food comes from and who it is that we have to thank for it. Our modern Western tradition about celebrating Harvest Festival in churches began in 1843 when a vicar in Cornwall invited the congregation to give a special Thanksgiving service at church. In Victorian hymns such as We Plough the Fields and Scatter, which we had this morning at 8 o'clock, Come Ye Thankful People Come, and All Things Bright and Beautiful, which we also had at 8 o'clock this morning, are traditional hymns at this time. But Harvest Festival is a service as part of a long tradition for God's people. It goes back at least 4,000 years. There were three important Jewish festivals that all Jews attended. And the first one was the Feast of Passover. It was usually at the beginning of the harvest and it reminded them of their escape from Egypt under Moses. The second festival was the Feast of Weeks or Harvest where the Jews gave thanks to God for their crop. This festival occurred at the end of the barley harvest. And the third feast was the Feast of Tabernacles, which occurred after the grape and grain harvest was over. And why wouldn't you celebrate the grape harvest? After all, it goes to make wine, doesn't it? <laughs> all three of these festivals reminded them of God's blessing on his people. At harvest time, we gather together to give thanks for the gifts that we've received and to share what we have with those less fortunate. It's wonderful to, be, to see food being offered with open hearts for those in need. And it's a Christian imperative to look after anyone who's vulnerable and poor. However, the purpose of our worship is not just as a food bank drive this morning. Part of it's to realise that we're not as self-sufficient as we think. We need God and we need each other. And at times we need help too. And a number of us in recent times have had meals prepared and delivered, transport provided for hospital and doctor's visits, and so on. And you know what? We can't do it all ourselves. We're built to be a community and balance that with God, people, and creation. If the last two years have taught us anything, it's that life is much less in our control than we might think. We've all experienced the reality of going to supermarkets and seeing the aisles um, missing, uh, with missing toilet paper and yeast and other things that we might like to purchase. The parable of the rich fool that has an abundance of possessions and stores up grains and goods that we heard today 
talks about God loving a cheerful giver. And it's often used on Stewardship Sunday. Of course, we're stewards of money and possessions, creation and our gifts from God. It's a time to realise how fortunate we are that we have a food supply that some in the world don't. And it's a time to reflect on the effects of climate change on the world's food supplies and to think how we might better care for God's creation. Paul in the reading today, or in yeah, today's reading, talks about three specific ways that others will benefit when you give. It will supply the needs of the saints. So the poor will be fed. Churches will be planted. Missionaries will be supported. The gospel will be advanced. It will cause others to thank God and give glory to him. And when you give, you will be an answer to somebody else's prayer. When God uses you to meet their needs, they will thank and glorify God as a result of your gift. And it will bring you closer to others. I'll long and pray for you because of your generosity to them. The benefits of giving are clear. But what about of the benefits? Uh, sorry, the benefits of giving to others are clear. But what about the benefits of giving uh, to us? Well, guess what? God blesses generous givers. And we heard that this morning. Verses 8 to 10 of Corinthians is all about that. God's able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. He who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Paul teaches us that there are two ways to fail at giving, though. If you give generously but not joyfully, you're giving the wrong way. And if you're joyful but not generous, you've failed also. God wants you to give at that intersection of generosity and joy. And of course, there are other types of harvest, too. There's also the harvest of souls that we're called to do. And that has a relationship with thanking God and sharing our abundant harvest with others. In John 4, 34, Jesus refers to the fields being ripe for harvest. But in this case, Jesus is referring to us reaping a spiritual harvest by going out and telling people about the kingdom of God. Jesus has given us the gift of God and he's wanting us to go out and share the message with others to create disciples so that they will share abundantly in this life and everlasting life. The Great Commission calls on us to reap a spiritual harvest, and there are two readings from the Bible that speak into that, which I'm sure that you will know from heart, by heart. From Mark 12, verse 30, the most important uh, Jesus talks about the importance of the essence of what it is to be a disciple. The most important one is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. And the second one in Matthew 28 that we're all called to help other people follow Jesus and to be his disciples too. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We can't do one without the other. Being a follower of Jesus Christ means patterning our lives after Jesus and seeking to love both God and those around us wholeheartedly. But that's only part of the story. 
as we see in the lives of the disciples in the early church they followed but as well as being disciples they also learned how to make disciples disciples making disciples so let's praise god of all creation for it's through your goodness that we have all of the gifts we have to share accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom amen And now we come to time for our intercessions. So let us praise God and the whole world and especially his church here at St. James. Please sit or kneel. God of all creation, thank you for our good land here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Thank you for those who till the land including those who tend their own patch of land to grow their own crops. Thank you for providing the food we need every day. We think of those who have no land to till, who have little or no access to food. We pray for workers of aid agencies including the World Food Program. In some areas, they require assistance from governments to enable them to carry out their work. Grant them safe passage, particularly through hostile areas, so they can transport food to millions of displaced people, many of whom are dying of hunger. Creator God, may we live in such a way that we are able to draw from our resources and gladly share your provisions with those in need. Ete atua aroha. Creator of the universe, look kindly on our world, which is in deep trouble. We look to you to instill hope in our hearts, hope that doesn't depend on the state of our affairs, but a hope that remains even amidst increasing tension around us, because it is a hope that is anchored in you whose love is constant and whose promise is true. For there is no situation, however grim, that can ever separate us from your love. Ete atua aroha. Our hearts go out to the people of Ukraine. O oh God, have compassion on the tens of thousands who have been displaced, especially the vulnerable children and women and its citizens who are defending their land. We pray for safety for them and for President Zelensky and his family. Guide the leaders of NATO, European Union, and the Security Council, and grant that President Putin will open his heart and engage in diplomatic discussions to end this invasion. Ete atua aroha. We pray for the Anglican Church in Kenya and its Archbishop Jackson or Les Sapit. Here at home, we pray for the parishes of St. Michael's in Newlands and Onslow, and for their new leaders, Rebecca and Richard Apperley, Anne.
Andy and Beck Hickman. Ete atua aroha. We pray for university students and lecturers as they begin the academic year. We pray for healing for those who have caught the virus. Guide and strengthen Dr. Ashley Bloomfield and his team and all the doctors, nurses, frontline workers, and help us, all of us, to be diligent in doing all we can to prevent the virus from spreading. Ete atua aroha. In our parish, we pray for our nominators and our bishops as they continue to look for the right person to be our next vicar. We pray for Murray, our priest in charge, and for Catherine Frude, who has joined us to assist in pastoral care. And we pray for the home study groups that will be meeting during the season of Lent. Grant that together we may grow in love, in self-discovery, and in unity, that those around us may know what a loving God you are, whom we seek to obey and worship. Ete atua aroha. We pray for those with particular needs for whom prayer is asked. We pray for Albert, Bill, Lindley, Emma, Daniel, Lila, Ian, Diana, Stephen, Sheldon, Joyce, John, Emily, Sophia, Lynn Stella, Dorothy, Eddie B, Isabel, Margaret. Support and comfort those who mourn. And we name those who have died. Francis Wills, Mari's sister-in-law. Richard Houston. and those killed in the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the last few days. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Ete atua aroha. God of seed and growth and harvest, creator of need, creator of satisfaction, give us, we pray, our daily bread, sufficient and assured for all. Give us also the bread of life, and we shall have a care to feed the hungry and to seek for peace and justice in the world. Today, as we receive the bread of, at the Eucharist a little later, remind us, O Lord, that you are alive and present here with us, offering your body to be broken for us again and again. You are our life today and every day. You are the food we need now and forever. Amen. Okay, please stand for the peace, I believe.
tonu te rang marie o te riki ki a koto. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let's stay where we are and turn and face each other offering a sign of Christ's peace. You have to stay in your seat, I'm afraid. Yep, that's good. And we can offer peace. And we can offer peace to all of those online as well. You'll see them, some of them on the screen. None of them have their cameras on. They must be all still in their pajamas. Um, hello to everybody. That uh, says hello from Joan, yes. And Chang, hello Chang. And the Cappies, Maria, John, Penny and Ian, Natalie. Jean and Harry, and Peter and Alison Hodge. Great to see you all. I think I've got him in, Pam, Pam Harlan. Hello, Chang. Hello, Pilot. Are you there? And Yumi? Yep, they're there somewhere. Great to see them all. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you feel part of the service. You're able to sit there without masks on. Aren't you lucky? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I believe we're going to have our song now. I'm not sure which one it is. We switch back. Oh, we're ploughing the fields now. That was mentioned earlier, wasn't it? So we're ploughing the fields in this, in this service as well. That's good. Okay, I think we need things to come forward. And the, perhaps the baskets as well, and then we can say this prayer together.
Everyone's pitching in today, which is fantastic, because we are short of, as you can see, a few positions, but that's great that we can pitch in. Okay. For all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours, O God, and of your own we give you. Thank you. Someone would just like to help Robin uh, lift the altar rail. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son and made your home among us. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us, and your light might reach to the ends of the earth. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. Take, eat, he said. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit or kneel now as we sing the Lord's Prayer.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. So draw near now and receive the body of our Saviour Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died and lives for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
is my shepherd he goes before me defender behind me I won't fear I'm filled with Let's say this prayer together. Holy God, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. 
Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. And as we go into the world, may God help us to live our lives as people of the harvest. To share and to give, to bless and to love, each playing our part. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. And now we move to family time. Now the most exciting thing has happened, and that is Catherine has joined us. Um, Catherine Froud, welcome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> As you might gather, Catherine and I have known each other for many years, and Amanda, yes, we worked together in about 2007 or something, yes, at the Ministry of Transport of all places, so there we are, before our priestly lives, and we also did our training together as three years, see, three years, I've, I've wiped it from my memory, <laughs> um, and Raywin too, there is a connection. So it's really good to have Catherine here. She started this week. She will be handed a certificate next week. She will be commissioned. But she's actually taking the service next uh, next week. And I'll Ash Wednesday preaching. She's preaching on Ash Wednesday. There you go. That's, which is great, because I thought I might have been. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really pleased about that. That's fantastic to have Catherine here as an extra pair of hands. Yeah, so please make her feel welcome. I know some of you have met here if you've come in during the week, but you're allowed to applaud because I certainly am applauding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Catherine, no, 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 I'll, I'll no, give you a no, microphone. No, 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 that's all right. no they won't well, you. okay, it's a huge privilege to be here, and I really hope I can serve you well through this time. Um, I felt God's hand guiding um, me, us, through this process to, that has brought me here. So um, thanks be to God. Yeah. So thank you. Yes, Catherine's come most immediately from Northland, uh, but she's been in High Tai Tai, Island Bay, sorry, and Karori before that. So... Um, it's brilliant to have her here to, her here to share the load at this time. Now, Lenten Studies Groups. Behind Dan on the back wall are sign-up sheets for Lenten Studies. So if, you are going to, if you're wanting to take part in a study group, then there are sign-up sheets there. There are also copies of the Lenten Studies books for those people who are going to join into groups. If we find that we run short, then we have a PDF copy which we can send to you as well. And if you're not able to be in a Lenten Studies group, then perhaps you might like a PDF version um, that you can study uh, on your own. Uh, Raywin looks as if she's ready to say something, so yep, so that's great. Um, I want to do two things. I want to first of all talk about a moment that God has been working in my life. Um, if that's all right. Sure. Um, yeah, so we, like very that. we like to talk about those things in church, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. So very recently, I, or over the Christmas break, I um, had a conversation, an unexpected conversation, um, where someone encouraged me to look at Christian counselling as a way to enhance my pastoral ministry. And I thought about it at the time, and I did a little bit of having a nose around to see what was available in terms of courses and found one which I liked, but um, was not able to enrol in it until next year at the earliest, and even then it was a little bit doubtful it might have been the year after. Um, two Thursdays ago, I got an email inviting me to apply for a space, and on Friday, or after last weekend, a big weekend of getting all the bits and pieces together, and being very blessed by three people who agreed to be my referees, I um, had an interview on Friday, which not only did I get offered a place, but um, I had talked about doing part-time study to fit in with the administrator role. And she, the woman I talked with said, 
actually, have you thought about enrolling full time and um, asking for credit from about half the course this year? So that's what's going to happen. Um, this week I'm applying for that credit, so hopefully it goes through. But basically I'll be starting a counselling course from the Bethlehem Tertiary Institute, um, which is the same counselling course that Peter did some years ago. So I um, feel very blessed and very much like God has been a hand in this as well. Um, and kind of interesting that that's happening just as Catherine's walking in the parish too. So I think God has a plan for all of us here. Now the second thing is far more boring. I want to talk about Omicron and the um, parish. So first of all, if you have a test and it comes back positive, please let me know. I promise I will not disclose your um, name to anyone, but I do need to, uh, without your permission, but I do need to um, inform other people who have been sitting in the same church service as you if you've been in a church service. Secondly, um, if you are required to self-isolate, either because you or someone in your household has a positive result, then please let me know. Um, we can do several things. We can help you with delivery of essential items. We can pray for you. We can keep you connected through Zoom on a Sunday morning, so welcome to all those people who are on Zoom now. We can just connect you with another person in the church to ring you sometimes and check in on you and keep those connections going. So please let us know. We're really happy and willing to help you, but it is absolutely essential that we do know if you have a positive test. And finally, and this is a message to you guys sitting in the church and to those people who will be coming to any 10 o'clock service, we are really stretched with our rosters. You saw today we actually had two people rostered on, but unfortunately one of them has to self-isolate. So at the very last minute, there may be gaps on a Sunday morning Thank you to Sarah for jumping in and bringing some things down. It, I know it doesn't feel like much, but it actually creates the community here. And so just be prepared to be asked to do things that you might not normally do, is what I'm suggesting. Um, and um, please be willing to jump into those gaps um, so that we can all enjoy the service on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Thank you. And we're very forgiving if things go wrong. So, so you know, I, I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, we are very forgiving in that sense. Uh, Dan, have you got something to say? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you all here and those online. Just a quick update on a notice I gave a couple of weeks ago about the Pahutakawa tree. So if you look out to your right... This big tree that's right here, that is coming out tomorrow. So I had confirmation from Treescape that they can come in and do it tomorrow. And we also got confirmation from a company that's willing to take the wood and pay us $500 for it. So it's all been arranged for the tree to be chopped down, the wood to be removed, and the stump to be grinded tomorrow. So yes, that's all good. And that's um, that will allow us then to maintain that side of the church and also get scaffolding up for the painting when that is confirmed. So I just wanted to let you know when you come in next Sunday that tree will be gone, we'll have a bit more light coming in there and it'll be better for the church and the foundations etc. Thank you. Thanks Dan. And just uh, finally I uh, just want to say uh, thank you to the two Margarets and to Sue Barlow and others who um, came here yesterday afternoon and set up the church for, um, for this service. I think it's fantastic. Up here we've got a display, we've got displays actually throughout the whole church. And isn't it great, you know, that people have come and they've, they've done that. Yeah. Hey Colin, how are you? You've got something to say, have you? Okay. I certainly do. Okay. As long as it's short, we'll be... It will be short. We'll be good. 
Okay. okay, first of all, I'd just like to say welcome to Catherine to the parish. Thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs> um, I love the fact that you're wearing purple. God said if you walk past purple and you don't notice it, you get very, very annoyed. So welcome to the parish. Thank you, Sarah, for this morning, for helping out. They, they were right, there's lots of gaps, and we really need to support the church and the parish. Um, I'd like to just quickly read a brief letter. This is not my letter. It's not my statement. This was, this was left, it from, this, though, Colin? This was left, it's from Lenny, and he was walking past my house, and he has been, he's homeless. With his, with his, he's going to lose his house. He needs a property to rent in the Alistown area. He has a wife okay. and three children. Okay. Could somebody That's please fine. help him? That's fine, Colin. Yeah. If you need the details for Lenny, I'll leave them with the pastor, and his telephone number and contact details will be there. I'd also like to draw your attention to the literary, to the literary of the Timaraka, Timatharaika, right, of the year C, 2022, of the Anglican Church. Everything you need to know for next year will be in this church. These are not my words. These are the Lord's words. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you, Colin, and bless you. The, uh, so, Colin, there, by the look of the letter, it's someone who needs some accommodation. So, uh, thank you. I'll have a look at that. If anyone has got any accommodation that they could provide, that will be... I'll talk to you about that. Um, thank you very much. Any other notices? Any birthdays? Let's celebrate if there's a birthday or an anniversary. No. Somebody. There, look, early. Is it your birthday? It was on Wednesday. Oh, that's fantastic. Wonder if our, I wonder if our music director's got a happy birthday in him. He does. <laughs> Okay, let's stand and sing our recessional hymn for the beauty of the earth.
return to the door. And I suppose we're all inspired now to go home and get in the garden. <laughs> if you have, uh, you are growing things, please do share them with people. Who knows, the neighbour next door might be very, very grateful. So go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen.